easy way of checking whether a function is a function or not. Circles. There's a reason why you will never see uh, the equation of the circle in the form f of x. Circ circles are always in the form x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. That's the equation of a circle. Uh, always in that form because if I draw a vertical line through any point in that circle, it fails the vertical line test. However, linear functions pass vertical line tests, and we call them linear functions. Not, even though it has a clear relationship between x and y variables, uh, it always, the vertical line will always cut through um, at one particular point, and every x coordinate only has one y coordinate attached to it. Another concept I want to review from last year is the whole concept of domain and range. Uh, in grade 12, there is a whole course that focuses on just functions. We don't talk about cir circles or ellipses. We're only talking about graphs that represent functions. And because of that, up to this point, we've really been focusing on linear functions, quadratic functions. In grade 9 and 10, you learned everything you could possibly learn about linear and quadratic functions. However, now, like I t taught you rational equations. We learned about square roots, but we've only been working about uh, with the equations. We haven't learned what the graphs look like and how to deal with the graphs. But in order to go on to grade 12 functions, now you have to learn what each equation, being able to attach the equation to the graph, and knowing all the properties. So this test is not a hard test, but you need to know the domain and range and all the and the special characteristics of different types of functions. And uh, I think five of them we're really going to deal with today. Now, uh, we're going to start off with the linear function. Very, very simple. So for my linear graph, if I had arrows on both sides, right, the arrows mean that the graph is going to continue forever and ever and ever on both sides. And how do I say that mathematically? What did I teach you last year? So, way of saying that, x, e, r. x belongs to real numbers. That means the graph is going to continue forever and ever till negative, sorry, positive infinity, and it's moving forever and ever and ever to negative infinity both left and right on the domain, and the range as well, up and down. However, if I took, take these little arrows away, that completely changes things. Now my domain, remember the domain is the x-coordinates covered by the graph, basically. So I know that my x-coordinates start here at negative 6, and I'm going to go all the way till positive 5. That's when my x-coordinates end. Because coloring can really, really help you figure out what the domain and range is. You'll, learn, you'll remember that from Unit 17 last year. So for my domain, I know that uh, my x-values are in between. This is how, you'll remember that this is how you say in between. If your inequality sign face the other direction, it no longer means in between. So you have to write it the proper way. The smaller x-coordinate goes on the left-hand side, and the larger x-coordinate goes on the right-hand side. So my x-coordinates are in between negative 6 and 5. I don't say x belongs to real numbers because this graph is not going forever. In terms of my y coordinates, my y coordinates start at negative 8 and they go all the way to positive 8. So my range is going to reflect this. y is in between negative 8 and positive 8. So that is linear functions, domain and range. Now, if I go back to quadratic functions, so this quadratic function is called concave up. 
it looks like a big happy face, smiley face, concave up. This is concave down. And I'm going to use coloring to help me find my domain and range. Now, in both situations, my domain, if you look closely at the graph, there is no starting and ending point for the domain. Quadratic functions always have little arrows at the end. So we're moving all the way from negative infinity to positive infinity. Negative infinity to positive infinity. There's no starting or ending point even over here all the way from negative infinity going up and down and then to positive infinity. So my domain x-coordinates are all co covered. All of the x-coordinates, all of the x-coordinates, and that's going to continue forever and ever. So whenever it's concave up or concave down, your quadratic function is going to be x belongs to real numbers, x-e-r. That's always going to be the case. However, my range is a different story. Can someone tell me where does my range start? Where do my y coordinates start for this particular graph? Good. They start at negative 4. And I'm, am I going to color this graph up or down? Yeah, all the y values, you color inside the graph, up, 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 and there are arrows. So that means the arrows mean to keep going forever and ever and ever and ever. To say that in mathematics, y, oops, y is all values greater than or equal to negative 4. And make sure you get that greater than sign right. And then, since we're coloring forever and ever, y belongs to real numbers. Range is a little bit different over here because in this particular case, I'm coloring down. I start at positive 1. And I won't color up because my graph has nothing to do with the values up here. So I'm going to color down and down and down. And I continue coloring forever and ever and ever and ever. Okay? So that means my y values are less than or equal to positive 1. y belongs to real numbers. So the coloring, the continuing to color, really helps you figure out is it an belongs to real number situation or not? Does everyone, does, did everyone have, whatever, okay, good. Okay, so I think that's enough for these particular slides. Let me exit full screen mode and we're going to jump to some different slides. All right, so can I pull this? So now we're going to be talking in Unit 8. We did a lot of questions that had to do with the intersection of quadratic functions and linear functions, and we've already spoken about the domain and range for linear functions. Um, now I just want to tell you, I Right now, you can see g of x is equal to x squared. That means that you can have a table of, um, table of values that represents more than one graph. So the x coordinates are shared by both of those graphs. They both share the same x values. However, g of x, this, these values are the y values for my quadratic function. And then f of x, because it says f of x is the linear f of x is the linear function. So these are my y values for the linear function. So whenever you see a table of values in your textbook combined like that, really uh, analyze it. Just know that it belongs to the y values are different. The x values are always the same. So for my x cubed graph, very simple actually. Your domain x belongs to real numbers because you notice, that, like the parabola, there's no starting or ending point. These x coordinates are going to continue forever and ever. This is going to continue forever and ever, so it's going to cover all the y coordinates. And same thing with y. There is no starting or ending point. So x belongs to real numbers, y belongs to real numbers.